Welcome to Guthrie Review Podcast. Yesterday, as he encouraged his base to donate money to the Save America PAC instead of directly to the Republican Party. Mm, what impact is going to have on GOP fundraising and in the races to come? Democratic strategist and owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer Holdsworth Carp, and Senior Director of Policy, Rachel Bovard. They join us now to discuss. Rachel, that sound you hear is, are all these Republican consultants in Washington setting their hair on fire, wondering how they're going to pay for their yachts and their second homes. But more seriously, what do you make of this? Because it is just a pretty big decision. And how is this going to impact Republican financing and the races in 2022? Well, I don't think it's as big a deal as everyone's making it out to be in the sense that, mm. okay, Trump is like forming a super PAC. This is kind of what we expected. You know, I, the, we forget that after Citizens United, the party organizations themselves are not that powerful. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest player, for instance, in Republican Senate races is not the National Republican Senatorial Committee. It's Mitch McConnell's super PAC, the Senate mm -hmm. Leadership Fund. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I see this more as Trump taking on sort of those big institutional leadership PACs, which, again, aren't really getting money from, you know, small dollar donors anyway. They're getting money from Steve Schwartzman and right. Blackstone, right. you know, and billionaires uh, and Paul Singer. So I don't necessarily... Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. I think one of the worst legacies of the Obama presidency was the politicization of the Department of Justice during the eight years of the Obama-Biden presidency. The Department of Justice has a long history of being apolitical, of exercising fidelity to law, of not being used as a partisan weapon to target the enemies of whichever administration is in power. The Obama-Biden administration corrupted that process and we are still dealing with the consequences. I believe appointees to the Department of Justice should have a demonstrated record of fidelity to law and impartiality, an ability to defend the rule of law. Ms. Gupta, as I look at your record, your record is one of an extreme partisan advocate. Your record is an ideologue. Now, there's a role in our democratic and political process for ideologues, for people that are extreme, radical advocates. That role, I believe, is not being the number three lawyer at the Department of Justice in charge of the impartial and fair administration of justice. As I look at your record on every single issue, the positions you've advocated for are on the extreme left, and you've demonstrated an intolerance for and hostility to anyone that disagrees with the extreme left political positions. On the issue of abortion, is there any restriction whatsoever on an abortion that you believe is permissible? Senator, first, let me begin by saying I'm sorry that you feel that way. As a lifelong civil rights advocate, my duty has been to enforce the Constitution, um, not enforce anyone's political agenda or partisan agenda. Uh, I have apologized today for some of the harsh rhetoric that I've used, and I mean that. Uh, and and I'm genuinely. not focusing on your college years. I'm focusing on as an adult and practicing lawyer. But let's just start with a substantive question. 
Is there any, is it permissible? right for the last few years they really workers i think that that unfortunately workers have been fed a false narrative no surprise right for the last few years they've been fed uh, the notion that somehow dealing with climate is coming at their expense no it's not what's happening to them is happening because of other market forces already taking place Climate envoy there, John Kerry, defending President Biden's climate agenda. But 12 Republican-led states are suing the administration over an executive order that would expand federal environmental regulation. Their lawsuit says the order, and this is a quote, will destroy jobs, stifle energy production, strangle America's energy independence, suppress agriculture, deter innovation, and impoverish working families. It determines the sovereignty of the states and tears at the fabric of liberty. Missouri is the state leading the lawsuit charge. And its Attorney General, Eric Schmidt, joins me now. Great to have you on the program. First of all, how does this policy do all of that, do all of those things that are enumerated? Well, I think it's important to take a step back and understand where this came from. On his first day in office on January 20th, he signed an executive order forming this working group that was going to come up with, come up with these so-called social costs of um, greenhouse gases. And very recently, they came up with that number uh, in the trillions of dollars. And so nearly one half of the U.S. economy will be swallowed up by what this working group that's not elected by anybody um, came up with. And it'd be in incredibly detrimental. It's essentially a blank check to all the federal agencies to ramp up regulations to meet that number of, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars that would affect working families and put entire mm -hmm. industries uh, out of business. And so this is a this is a massive power grab by the federal government and all the agencies. And not only is it just bad policy, it's also unconstitutional. Uh, there's essentially there's no legislative authorization for the president to do this. So we, we argue in the in the lawsuit that this is a violation of the separation of powers and so Missouri's leading the charge to push back. 
You know, I, I'm curious when you say uh, it, this group came up with a list, this group of non-elected people, uh, at the cost.